Good afternoon. Welcome to the Barry M. Goldwater Range Land Withdrawal Application Virtual Public Meeting. My name is Nancy Favor. I'm an Environmental Planning Specialist with the BLM Arizona State Office in Phoenix, and I'll be moderating our meeting today. Thankfully, I'm being supported by many, many smart people to help me out with this process. I'm very excited to be trying this new technology, but I know it can be challenging to new to use new technology and to use new programs. If you haven't used Zoom in a while, please take this moment to update your software. And please bear with us as we learn and let us know how we can help you. I'm gonna take a minute before we get started to see if anyone needs technical support from our team. Please use the Q&A box or raise your hand in Zoom if you are online or hit star nine on your phone if you need technical assistance. Please keep your hand raised until we call on you. I'm gonna pause now and see if anybody needs help. While we are doing that, I'll let you know that we are recording this meeting and we are providing closed captioning. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm not seeing any uh, technical questions at this time. So this meeting is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the BMGR project web website as well as to the BLM Arizona YouTube channel. Later in the broadcast we will read the project web address for those of you on the phone. You may also go to blm.gov forward slash Arizona for more information. We will post the video and transcript of the meeting after the meeting. Our standard policy, uh, standard privacy disclosure, you should know that before including your address, phone number, email address, or other personal identifying information in your comment, please be aware that your entire comment, including your personal information, may be publicly available at any time. While you can ask us in your comment to withhold your personal information from public review, we cannot guarantee that we will be able to do so. Next slide, please. And now for some meeting information and ground rules. Participants' phone lines and audio will be muted throughout the meeting unless we call on you during the public input portion of the meeting. We welcome your questions and comments. Please feel free to enter questions at any time using the Q&A text box if you are online. We do have a team of specialists who will be working to address questions, but it may take a couple minutes or more to provide a response. Note that you will not be able to see other participants' questions until our team enters a response. This meeting is being live captioned. To see the captions, click on the closed caption button at the bottom of your Zoom window. After the presentation, we will open up the meeting to hear your input. We will have a timer on screen and each speaker will be limited to two minutes. We do want to hear from as many people as possible, so please be brief and also know that we may not be able to get to everybody that wants to speak. We will give priority to the people who indicated a desire to provide comment in their registration. After we work through those comments, we will hear from as many others as we have time to do so. The meeting will end at four o'clock. If you aren't able to speak today or we don't directly answer your question, please know that we welcome your written comments through the project website and project email address. We'll provide that information in a few moments. Note that if you want your comment entered into the official project record, it must be submitted in writing. And lastly, please be respectful and courteous. Inappropriate language will not be tolerated. We'll do our best to mute callers as soon as we hear any offensive language. Next slide, please. All right, our agenda for today, we're gonna hear uh, an opening address from Ed Kender, the BLM Arizona Lower Sonoran Field Office Manager. Then we'll hear from Eddie Ariola, BLM Project Manager from the BLM Arizona State Office. And he'll provide an overview of the land withdrawal application process. And then we'll hear from the US Air Force. Chaz Buchanan, Director of the 56 Range Management Office, will speak about how the military uses the range. And then we'll hear from John Halasek, Range Specialist with the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. And he'll speak about recreation and public uses of the range. And then we'll open it up to hear uh, your comments and questions. We hope to start that about 3.30 and hear from as many of you as possible. I want to let you know that we have a team of subject matter experts on standby and they're available to answer your questions. We have staff from both the Air Force and the Marine Corps. The meeting will adjourn at four o'clock. Next slide, please. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ed Kender with the Lower Sonoran Field Office. Welcome, Ed.
Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for taking time out of their afternoon. Uh, as you see, we are having some technical difficulties at times. Uh, we normally hold these meetings uh, in a face-to-face -face, uh, public forum, but due to COVID, we're doing it in a virtual format and using the latest technology and trying to be effective and efficient at the same time uh, broadcasting to hopefully a broader audience than having people take time off of work and go into the venue as a uh, out of their time uh, during the day with travel. This way we could actually uh, cut out that travel time and do it in a virtual component. Uh, the Air Force, uh, BLM, Air Force, and Marine Corps are working together to develop the analysis for needed for training while protecting the resources. Over the years, Barry Goldwater Range staff has been exceptional resource stewards of the range, which have been highlighted in their integrated natural resource management plan, public reports that they publish. And we are glad to be partners with both the Air Force and Marine Corps now and moving into the future. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for their time and looking forward to their inputs. Uh, cover the next slide, please. And why are we doing this public meeting? Well, we are required to hold a public meeting uh, for certain withdrawal actions. And this one is definitely greater than 5,000 acres as per 43 CFR regulations. And also, as per President's declaration uh, for the national emergency on March 13th, I, we're asked to hold these meetings virtually online instead of the public format because of COVID. And, and as I said earlier, and I'm sure you'll hear throughout this presentation, there are many ways for you to share your com comments as we are still early in the process for this project. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say in regards to helping us with this withdrawal action moving into the future. Right now, I'd like to introduce Eddie Ariola to take over and cover the next slide. Thank you for your time again. Thank you, Ed. Um, I'm gonna go over the uh, withdrawal application process in general. Uh, just to set the stage, uh, the map you see on the slide now is of the Barry and Goldwater range in uh, the light pink shade. Uh, you have BMGR East, which is operated by the Air Force, and BMGR West, which is operated by the Marines. Uh, as you can see, it basically extends from Gila Bend, Arizona, all the way to Yuma, Arizona, and just south of I-8. Uh, the land that you see in yellow is BLM land. Uh, that in light blue is uh, Arizona state land. Uh, the white is private land. And just south of the BMGR uh, in green, that's the Cabeza Prieta Wilderness of the, it's a wildlife refuge of the Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, just south and east of that is Oregon Pipe National Monument, uh, the park, and east of there is the Tohono O'odham Nation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the BLM received a joint Air Force and Marine Corps application to extend the existing Barium Goldwater land withdrawal, which encompasses approximately just under 1.7 million acres. Um, and we also received an Air Force application to add an additional 2,366 acres of public land just east and southeast of Gila Bend Air Auxiliary Field. And that is just south of Gila Bend. These lands were segregated for mineral and other entry under the public land laws until Congress makes a decision. Uh, the application will be processed in accordance with the regulations, uh, BLM regulations at 43 CFR 2300. Next slide, please. The existing withdrawal, which was passed in 1999 under public law 106-65, uh, was were drawn for the purposes of an armament and high hazard testing area, training for aero gunnery, rocketry, electronic warfare, and tactical maneuvering and air support, equipment and tactics development and testing, and other defense related purposes consistent with the above. The current application we received is proposing to continue these operations as is. The only difference is that they are proposing uh, to extend what's the withdrawal in perpetuity. Um, and in this case, in all cases, only Congress can approve withdrawals longer than 20 years. Next slide, please. The overall process is um, the BLM as a land management agency uh, is responsible for processing federal land withdrawal applications. 
And because of that, BLM is responsible to hold public meetings and solicit public input on the proposed action for the withdrawal. The comments the BLM receives will be part of the overall withdrawal application process and will be considered in the analysis. The Air Force and the Marines are co-leads in preparing the Legislative Environmental Impact Statement, uh, which is part, which is a component within the withdrawal process. And BLM is a cooperating agency in that legislative EIS. The legislative EIS scoping period ends on June 3rd, which is strictly on online forum. The decision to be made is to approve or deny the withdrawal extension and the withdrawal um, addition. However, neither the BLM nor the military can make that decision. Um, that decision can only be made by Congress. Um, in summary, the BLM combines a withdrawal application, the legislative EIS, and other studies in a case file for submittal to Congress for its decision. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Chaz Buchanan uh, to give you the overall purpose and need of the legislative EIS and the proposed action. Good afternoon. I'm Chaz Buchanan speaking to you on behalf of the Air Force and the Marine Corps. And as you, as you look at the slide, it shows the BMGR stretching from Yuma to Gila Bend, as mentioned by Mr. Ariola, and represents the scope of what the Air Force and Marine Corps are proposing in this withdrawal extension. In general, the military missions using the BMGR are not changing, and therefore, in our legislative in, environmental impact statement, we are analyzing the existing footprint of the withdrawn land. Mr. Ariola also mentioned the surrounding land areas and land managers. I'm proud to say we have an excellent rapport with all the land managers and meet regularly to discuss land management activities on the BMGR and the execution of our integrated national resource management plan and project. Now you may ask why such a large expanse of land? It provides for the freedom of training opportunities, allows us to accommodate multiple aircraft at once, and provides for safety buffers to the range borders. You'll also notice a small inset at the top right hand slide uh, part of the slide, which does identify a small parcel of land that the Air Force is asking to be withdrawn, coincident with the bigger BMGR withdrawal extension effort. As we turn to the next slide, you can see where the Air Force is petitioning BLM for an additional 2,400 acres. Uh, the land is being sought after to better align land ownership just east of the Gila Bend Air Force Auxiliary Field, where there is a mix of Arizona Department of Emergency and, and Military Affairs land, Air Force land, BLM land, and some private parcels. Our intent is, is to provide the Air Force with enhanced security and safety on the eastern border of the airfield and under existing restricted airspace. The current request only involves BLM land. And again, our intent is to manage these lands just as we manage the larger BMGR. And currently there are no plans to build anything, or build anything or place anything on those parcels. Again, the land provides for increased safety and security to our operations. Moving on to slide 14. As stated earlier, the military mission isn't changing and with the advent of the F-35 and the continuing legacy F-16 and A-10 training for an example, the purpose for extending the BMGR land withdrawal is to continue supporting the military mission in the region. The need is to continue to provide realistic training opportunities to those who leverage the BMGR for training. The land in total helps us develop and refine air combat skills maintain combat readiness. And in today's battle space where the military employs as a team, it provides a practice field for us to hone those skills. And ultimately, the BMGR helps us prepare warfighters to survive and win in the air-ground battle space. Overall, the Air Force and the Marine Corps have been fortunate to have had the ability to train on the BMGR since 1941, focusing on fighter pilot tactics and training. Through the years, the mission sets and capabilities have evolved into more realistic integrated training scenarios, critical to force development and readiness. From as far back as the Korean conflict 
when specific targets were placed on the, on the BMGR to replicate the battlefield, to as recent as Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan, where every single deployed A-10 pilot first trained on the BMGR. The BMGR is one of the nation's most robust and flexible ranges, supporting realistic and integrated air combat, com combat training, which is essential for developing and maintaining the preparedness of the armed forces. As we look to slide 15, when the War Department identified and, si and selected Southwestern Arizona to support fighter training, they did so with a purpose. Wide open spaces and fantastic flying weather through the year lend themselves to unprecedented access and training. The BMGR is one of the largest land-based ranges in the DOD and is the Air Force's largest dedicated training range. Coupled with the surrounding airspace and geography, it provides a wonderful stage for varied degrees of combat flying and exposure from low level to medium high altitude tactics. Serving over eight primary military bases, as well as US Navy carrier-based aircraft off the coast of California, the BMGR cannot be realistically replaced by transferring the training and the other missions it supports uh, to, a, to another existing range. In summary, the BMGR is an irreplaceable national training asset, paramount to the readiness of our military forces. I'd now like to turn it over to John Halisek for further discussion on recreation and our LEIS process. Thank you, Chaz. This map shows the portions of the BMGR open for public recreation. The area is not shaded pink between the pink areas. 38% of the BMGR is open for public access. This means that 658,890 acres of the BMGR's total 1.7 million are open for public ac access, public recreation. No changes to this access are anticipated. Please remember, however, this is a military training range, which means it is occasionally closed to public access for short periods of time for military usage to protect the public from potentially hazardous training and test activities. <clears throat> the Department of Defense understands the value of the land, not just to us, but also to the public. So while we use the BMGR for military training, at the same time, we schedule military activities to allow for frequent public access to the range. As we look at this next slide, it shows the current estimated timeline for completing the Legislative Environmental Impact Statement, or LEIS, and the two major steps following that in the land withdrawal, renewal, and proposed expansion efforts. The LEIS will be part of a case file to be provided to the Bureau of Land Management for processing and then submitted to Congress to make a decision. As the graphic shows, we are currently in the scoping period, which began with the publication of a notice of intent to produce the LEIS in March in the Federal Register. While the Air Force scoping period closes on June 3rd, the BLM comment period is open until July 20th. There will be another opportunity for public participation and comment during the public review of the draft LEIS, which under the current schedule is expected this late fall or winter. A notice of availability of the draft LEIS will be published in the Federal Register to begin that period as well. That public comment period will include public hearings, and those hearings will also be announced in the Federal Register notice. It is too early to know at this time, however, if those hearings will be in person or virtual due to the COVID-19 situation. The last step in the LEIS process is publication of the final LEIS, which is scheduled for September of 2021. This next graphic shows the home page on the left side of their screen, home page of the project website that was developed to help provide information to the public about the proposed extension of the Barium Goldwater range and the land withdrawal and proposed expansion east of Gila Bend Auxiliary Field and south. For those of you on the telephone, that website address is B as in boy, A. R R Y as in Yankee dash M as in Mike dash G O L D as in Delta W A T 
T as in tango, E as in echo, R dash L E I S dot com. Clicking on the tab labeled about on this homepage takes you to a page providing an overview of the range and the military training activities taking place, as well as information on the proposed action and the alternatives being studied concerning the range. The tab labeled FAQ, or it's frequently asked questions, provides commonly asked questions and answers. The tab labeled documents provide links to numerous items, including four short videos about different aspects of the range, the history, purpose, environment and cultural sites, and the withdrawal process. Links to digital copies of the public scoping brochure, flyer, and newsletter are also available. Links to the presentation boards planned for the now canceled public face-to-face -face meetings, along with links to other information relevant to the land withdrawal renewal process are found on this page. Also links to the federal register notices for this project are provided. The tab labeled Get Involved provides information on the public scoping process and encourages you to submit your comments relative to the proposed land withdrawal renewal and the proposed expansion. The tab labeled Contact Us you see on the right half of your page or screen. This provides the methods of submitting comments on the effort and a form that may be filled out online and used to submit comments through the website. This suffices for written comments, if you will. <clears throat> Portions of the website have also been translated into Spanish, including the Contact Us comment form. And again, for those on the phone, if you didn't get the website address before, it's B-A-R-R-Y Barry dash M dash Goldwater, G-O-L-D-W-A-T-E-R dash L-E-I-S dot com. Thank you. And I believe it's now, Nancy, back to you. Okay, great. Thank you, John. All right. Now's the fun part of our meeting. We're going to open it up to hear your questions and comments. So um, we don't see any questions queued up in our Q&A box, but we did have a couple people that indicated that they might be interested in asking a question on their phone or via their computer audio when they pre-registered. So um, those individuals are uh, Lois Case and then Elizabeth. So um, if we could first have Lois, if you could please raise your hand in, um, okay, let's see. Um, or Lois, are you on the telephone? If you could uh, star, well, uh, star nine to raise your hand if you're on the phone and then uh, unmute yourself by star six. I'll pause and see if we have Lois on the line. Okay, we'll circle back on, on her. If you do uh, connect, Lois, then go ahead and raise your hand and we'll, we'll uh, put you at the top of the queue. But we'll go ahead and move on to Elizabeth Haskell. I see you have your hand raised. So Elizabeth, um, now if you could uh, unmute yourself and we would welcome your public input. So go ahead, please. Are you on the phone, Thank Elizabeth? You. No, I'm on the computer. Can you hear me? We can, perfect. Um, so the military scoping period ends on June 3rd, but the BLM comet period ends on July 3rd. And can you clarify for me the difference between those two, um, how they relate to each other, and what kind of comments the public would be expected to submit for each one? Absolutely. Um, John, do you want to take that question? Sure, I can do that. <clears throat> the Air Force scoping period is for the public to provide comments on things to be considered and evaluated in the legislative environmental impact statement, uh, potential impacts to the land, the resources, etc. The BLM's public comment period is to provide comments to the BLM 
on the BLM process, which includes the applications, both for the extension of the current withdrawal and for the proposed expansion. So slightly different purposes. Does that answer your question? If I can restate, so the Air Force scoping period um, is encouraging comments about the land itself um, and the BLM period is more about uh, the process. Is that correct? Yes, but when we say the land itself, it's the things that the Air Force and Marine Corps need to take into consideration when we do our analyses. If you have something specific relative to the, some of the resources there that you feel that we need to make sure we analyze, then please provide that to us on the website to make sure in case we weren't considering that, that we then do include it. Okay. So um, if I, uh, right. Can I follow up? Sure. My understanding is that the BLM is the entity that ultimately submits the LEIS and um, recommendations, is that correct? Uh, let's go ahead and have Eddie Ariola, if you could clarify the BLM's role in the process. Uh, yes, thank you. Hi, this is Eddie with the Bureau of Land Management in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, uh, so ultimately, um, the main difference between the two different um, end periods for the comment is because the, the publication and the federal registers weren't timely. Uh, or they, they weren't synchronized. And that's just by regulation that we have to publish in the Federal Register and so do so does the military as the lead agency on the LEIS. Ours was slightly delayed, so that's why our comment periods end at different times. Um, but yes, the, the BLM will take the application, the results of the legislative EIS, um, in concert with the military as two federal agencies and send it up to the department, uh, which in turn goes to Congress for their determination. Thank you. And since the BLM is a cooperating agency um, in the legislative EIS, any comments that we receive that are more appropriately for the analysis, um, we would turn them over to the, the military so they can consider them in the legislative EIS. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks for that question. Yeah, it's a little complicated. There's kind of two different processes going on. Uh, the BLM is doing the land withdrawal and the military is preparing a, an environmental analysis to support the land withdrawal. Thank you so much for that question. And now we will go to, I believe we have Lois. And Lois, I see your hand raised. If you could unmute yourself and we can uh, we welcome your comment. Uh, yeah, I see that you're muted. If you could star six to unmute yourself, Lois. Looking at it, star. Okay, you're, we can hear you, Lois. That's great. Oh, okay. Go, go okay. ahead. Okay. I basically have a question more than a comment. Um, what happens to all this land once... Uh, the military at some point down the line decides they don't need it anymore, whether that be the BLM land or the uh, other land, because right now it's all under federal control. But what happens to it if it's if it's thrown out somehow? I mean, what ha does it go back to BLM? Sure, that's. Thank you so much. That's a great question. I'm going to ask Chaz Buchanan, the director of the 56 Air Force Range, to, to speak to that question. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, and John, please uh, raise your hand if you want to add on to this. But, but ma'am, you're right. Um, it is withdrawn right now for military action. If at some point in the future the military determines that our mission is done, uh, we don't need the land anymore. It does revert back at least to BLM land, uh, if not something else. But obviously, before we turn it over, uh, there is a an extensive uh, cleanup effort that we have to do on the environmental side uh, because of all the uh, 
dangerous activity that we had been doing through the years uh, on the land itself. So uh, hopefully that answered your questions. John, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, you pretty well covered it, Chaz. Uh, the only addition I would make is that some of the lands within the boundary are owned by the Department of Defense as opposed to withdrawn from BLM. The disposition of those parcels is actually unknown at this particular time, and so that would be a bridge we'd have to cross when we come to it. But at the present time, I would state that it looks like as long as there's a United States of America, that we would need the BMGR to prepare our military forces to prosecute conflict at some point in the future if we need to. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you for that question. Let me see, um, I'm not seeing, uh, Lois, did you have a follow-up to that? I see your hand raised. And uh, we have Elizabeth Haskell. So uh, Lois, if you're still on the line, if you wanna go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the only other comment I'd like to make is that I've had past experience with uh, legislation that is kind of hidden to try to make it easier for somebody to get a hold of some really good military property and I won't go into the details obviously but I just am, that's a concern of mine I don't want to see all this land all of a sudden become available through legislation to be sold off to a developer I don't know enough about the area to know if that's feasible or not, but I'm just letting you know what my thinking was. Gotcha. I think um, maybe just real quick, if Eddie might be able to follow up, if for some reason the military were to uh, end their use of the land um, at current uh, in current status, it would revert to the BLM, I believe. And so it would still be managed uh, by the U.S. government. Is that correct, Eddie? Uh, yes, that is correct. And in this case, the legislation is very specific to this withdrawal and only this withdrawal. So it wouldn't contain any other components. Or um, if approved, um, it would not be in, in inserted into another piece of the legislation. As you mentioned, that sometimes... Uh, you have small bits of legislation embedded into a broader scope of law. Um, in this case, it's not. It's very specific and very unique to this withdrawal, as, as it was passed in 1999 as well. Okay, great. Thanks, Eddie. And thank you for those questions. Okay, now um, I'm going to go back to Elizabeth. I see your hand is raised. Did you have a follow-up question? If you want to unmute um, yourself, go ahead. There is another question in the Q&A box. Are you guys able to see it? Um, uh, yes, this is Eddie. Uh, Nancy, I could probably cover that. Um, sure, go ahead, Eddie. It, it is in there, and I believe they're working on an answer, or they've provided a written answer. Yeah. Is, is the I provided an answer to that question on there. I guess, I don't know if you guys can see it. But on oh, the yes. website address that I provided, there are brochures with maps and there are other maps. It, the maps don't zoom in real close detail. Um, a map like that, I'm not sure if that would be one of those maps available at the BLM office or different BLM offices. Eddie, you could answer that particular one. Uh, yes, uh, maps and all material will be available at the BLM offices in the uh, the Phoenix State Office, the Phoenix District Office, and the uh, Yuma Field Office. Was that the uh, question you were referring to? Yes, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, great. Do we have anybody else that's on the line that wants to raise their hand? And we can take your questions now. Um, I did see a question earlier, a general question that was asking um, if the Gila Bend addition 
would be developed um, if the military did acquire uh, that additional land. And so um, either John or Chaz, would, could you please speak to the plans for the Gila Bend additional parcels? Uh, Chaz is here, I, I can speak to it. Um, as I mentioned during my, my comments for the slides, uh, the real purpose of, of obtaining these parcels is to kind of clean up the land ownership on the eastern boundary of Gila Bend Air Force Auxiliary Field, um, and then also provide security uh, and, and safety, not only on the eastern side of the airfield, but also under our existing restricted airspace uh, lines. It, it, it falls over the top of, of open public land. Right now, we do, do not have any plans uh, to build anything on those parcels. Um, I can't say that uh, that would never happen, but, but I don't foresee that uh, right now, and that is not the purpose for us asking for these parcels at this time. Does that, uh, that, does that answer you, Nancy? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and then, uh, let's see. I think uh, we do have another question in the queue. Uh, the question was, and I think this will go to either Brock or to Chaz, um, I am very concerned that the plan is to withdraw the BMGR in perpetuity rather than for 25 years. That seems to give the military carte blanche to do whatever they like forever. So um, either Brock or Chaz, again, um, if you could speak to that question on the, per on the duration of this withdrawal. Uh, Chaz will take that. Uh, Nancy, my video's not working. Can you hear me? We can hear you great. Okay, I'll go ahead and speak to it. Um, you know, our preferred alternative in our uh, legislative environmental impact statement is to ask for the land in, in perpetuity. Uh, but at the same time, we don't plan on changing anything with respect to how we manage the lands, uh, the collaborative forums that we currently hold, uh, we expect and want to continue to hold those into the future. Those, those are like our Barium Goldwater Executive Council, as well as committee. So the council is, is an intergovernmental uh, forum uh, that's comprised of Air Force, Marines, BLM, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, Park Service, and Arizona Game and Fish, as well as Border Patrol. Border Patrol is not a land manager, but they're certainly a, a land user. And then on the public side is the IEC or Intergovernmental Executive Committee. And that is uh, the same BEC meeting or inter interagency meeting where we bring the public in to, to listen to, to us, to hear about what's going on, to hear about plans and projects, to hear about the, the issues that we're having and how we're trying to address them. And it also gives them a forum uh, to voice their concerns um, and their inputs. Uh, to us, it's an invaluable tool to help us continue the management of these lands. Um, we try to be very transparent in what we're doing. And it is, along with the, the Integrated National Resource Management Plan, as well as the Integrated Cultural Resource Management Plans, uh, those are refreshed uh, every year and then formally every five years. So there's public involvement in that. Um, so even though I think the word in perpetuity might scare some folks, um, it, it cleans some things up for us, but we do not plan on changing anything with respect to how we're managing or using the lands right now. Does that help answer that question? Yes, thank you. Can okay. I, can I add a point to that, Nancy? Absolutely. Go ahead, John. This is John Hellesack. And some people may not realize, but to, dis to destroy or deface the land actually reduces our training value. So it behooves us, it's in our best interest in the military to maintain the land as pristine as possible because that enhances our training value. And there, that's, that's not necessarily clear to a lot of people. So I wanted to make that, that point. Thank you. Great point. Okay, I see we do have some uh, 
some folks on the line who have their hands raised. I see first uh, we have Shannon Rivers. So Shannon, if you could unmute yourself. Uh, you're currently muted. Okay, Good now afternoon, you're everyone. Okay, go ahead. So this question is a two point, uh, maybe even a three point question. The first question is for Mr. Kender. Can you elaborate on protecting resources? You said that you were, um, that you were part of the, the group that was protecting the resources. And what do you mean by that? If the gentleman that just spoke said that the, um, the purpose of the military use of the land is to uh, do its best not to destroy the landscape, but if you're training, if you're, uh, what happens to military waste, uh, environmentally, what happens to the pronghorn, the desert tortoise, there have been environmental impact studies about the impact to those uh, species uh, and numerous other uh, uh, flora and fauna. The next question is for uh, Chaz. Uh, um, hey, uh, Shannon, if we could go ahead and pause, okay, I think sure. that might be better if uh, that was okay. a great question. Thank and um, Ed, are you uh, available to answer that question? Do we have Ed was having some technical difficulties earlier? If, if not, Nancy, I, I could probably answer it. Okay, why don't you go ahead, Eddie? And who is speaking? Hi, this is Eddie Ariola. I'm with the BLM in the Phoenix State Office. Thank you, Eddie. Um, yeah, so when when the legislation does pass, or if it does pass, yeah, there's usually say when it does pass. Thank yeah, you. Hey, yeah, exactly. Thank you Thank for you. that. Mm -hmm. um, if it does pass, as for example, the last legislation um, was very comprehensive, and it kind of out, it outlined what the roles and responsibilities were of which agency is going to be doing what. Um, further, um, after the legislation, we entered into an MOU to further uh, detail those responsibilities, um, which outlines exactly what environmental measures need to be taken in order to protect the resources, especially, well, sp specifically those resources that have been identified as being um, having some level of sensitivity. Um, additionally, um, the Air Force and the Marines have been required to produce integrated natural resource management plans every five years, which disclose um, how they're using the land and how they're protecting the land. And if you need more information on that, I'm sure John or Chaz could add some context to those INRMPs. Thank you, Eddie. Uh -huh. Does that answer um, your question? And it, yeah, it, go it, ahead with your second part. If yeah, you want. it, it, it it vaguely answers the question because there's re he's saying to uh, view the research and the plan from the military on exactly how they're protecting that and i don't have that in front of me so that 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 can be addressed i guess at a later point uh more extensively uh with this regards is, uh, could you hear me now uh, oh yeah go Hello? ahead ed yeah Go okay, ahead, um, one of the, and Eddie actually covered it uh, pretty good. And, and one of the things that, uh, as an example, and Chaz may want to elaborate on this, uh, with that integrated natural resource management plan, there have been examples of how they've been protecting resources. And one of the examples that I could think of uh, within the last few years is that there was a monsoon that wiped out one of their roads. And in the process of rebuilding the roads, they actually did uh, environmental, uh, they did do look at the environmentals of rebuilding the road. And in doing so, they actually uncovered a, uh, the monsoon uncovered a cultural site. And they actually went over and above with recording the natural resources there. They, uh, other examples that they do is invasive species, is that if there's any invasive species that are on the lands, they actually go in there and work with, uh, I know they have a, uh, 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 they worked with the University of Arizona, and uh, they were actually removing invasive species. So I, I know with the military themselves, they try to use as sm small of a uh, footprint of the bombing range as uh, Chess said before, but because it's so large is because of the numerous uh, sorties that go on and to provide uh, protection, not only for the, uh, the users themselves, but also the public. So that in case something does happen, that they are protected with uh, some of the other issues that may have, uh, that, that may occur. So I don't know if that answers your question. I tried well, just, to provide just to be, some just specific to be clear, examples. 
Right, just to be clear that when a cultural site is discovered by the, um, by the military or by anyone within the state of Arizona, uh, they are uh, expected to notify the, uh, the ancestors, specifically the Thona Autumn or the Gila River Indian community. And we, we re recognize that those things happen, but part of the disruption is, is that we are not to culturally, those are culturally sensitive sites, we are not to move or disturb them. And when those things happen, naturally, we still do not bother them. So that is a cultural and uh, religious violation, right? So those are still issues that are still pending with many, many different nations across the country uh, when things are disturbed. Um, so uh, I just want to be clear on that, that, uh, that typically we don't, traditionally we don't bother them and we don't move them. But because of NAGPRA, and because of other, uh, the Patriot Act and other things that have taken place, many numerous violations have been taking place toward indigenous peoples and their religious rights and freedoms. So I just wanna make sure that we're clear on that. Uh, the yes, second- we are clear on that. So thank you. The second question that I have is for Chaz. Uh, Chaz, you said something about enhancing security. I have a question mark on that because what do you mean by enhancing security? Was there something wrong with security previous? Um, and then and you, you also use the term increased, increased safety and security. Was there, in order to obtain that land, does that somehow uh, increase your security? And if so, how? Uh, good question. Um, as we continue to evolve as a military, our systems become more sophisticated, uh, demand higher levels of, of uh, perimeter security, internal security, um, as well as just uh, overflight flight safety to those on the ground. When you look at the eastern border of the Gila Bend Air Force Auxiliary Field, uh, the fence line is, is right at 1,000 feet from the runway. Uh, it's very close. Uh, and that's why I think years ago, uh, some of the Air Force lands we've discovered have been there since 1941. Uh, the Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs land, I think, was bought in the late 80s, maybe early 90s, uh, or acquired. And, and, I, and I think the, the effort at that time was try to provide a little bit more of a buffer, if you will, uh, between the, the base proper itself uh, and, and the public. Um, you know, there's rules about what can be built out there. There's, uh, um, you know, there's again, overflight. Uh, so there's clear zone considerations that we have uh, that relate to the runway itself. Um, and then when you get down underneath the restricted airspace, uh, it's the same thing. You know, most of our restricted airspace, uh, the land underneath it, not all of it, um, you know, has rules on on public access um, and even military access for that matter. Uh, and that's to, for their safety. Um, while the jets are up there, we try to be as, as least restrictive as possible. They have a lot of rules they have to follow. Uh, but as the, uh, as, the, as the weapons, just like the airplanes become more sophisticated, we need a little bit more, more land uh, to buffer for that safety. That help answer the question? I think so, but but your last point, are you saying that then technology is not getting any better? That that no, in I, fact the fact that you're using more space to fly a quicker, uh, more agile uh, craft? No, I'm saying that technology is getting much better. Okay. Uh, the, the progress that we've made between a fourth gen aircraft and a fifth gen aircraft is is not one step above it's 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 a huge step uh the way the airplane flies the tactic tactics it employs um and the weapons that that really both of them are employing now the fourth gen so that's an f-16 or an a-10 versus an f-35 the weapons themselves are, are, are relatively the same uh but the weapons themselves have become far more sophisticated, they're, they're, far, they're, they're very precision guided, uh, but in that precision, 
uh, we have what's called a, a weapons footprint uh, that lays across the ground, and that's the, the weapons potential of where it could go. The intent is for the pilot to to drop his bomb on his on his desired point of impact, you know, whatever he's whatever he's aiming at on the ground. Uh, but the weapon itself, the way it's designed, uh, it works, but it has the potential uh, to not necessarily hit the target. So we have to protect everybody, the public and the military, on the ground from that weapons footprint. And those those can get pretty big. Thank you, Chas. So the so the so my follow up then is if the military has been using uh, the Go Water range for um, target practice, uh, why would we need to expand this particular area when we have other locations that you have used previously? Wouldn't that jeopardize then people that live in Gila Bend or close to other uh, residential areas? Thank you for allowing no. me to ask these questions. Yeah. Um, no, again, the, the land uh, request, the additional land parcel request, is is really focused on Gila Bend Airfield proper. Um, obviously, not, we're not employing any weapons or overlaying any weapons fans uh, that far north. Um, but just south of there, where the restricted airspace starts, uh, there is potential to have a weapons fan there. Um, so we are, uh, through this request, it's not to, to, to protect the folks in Gila Bend. Um, it's really, again, to provide us a little bit better safety and security at the, at the airfield. Okay, thank you. Those yeah. are some good questions. Uh, thank you, Shannon. I'm going to move on. Um, I see Lois has her hand raised, but I'm going to ask uh, Samuel uh, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself. And uh, thank you for your patience. If you, sure. uh, okay, go ahead. Good, um, good afternoon. My name is Samuel Fant. I work for Don North Ammunition and Culture Affairs. Uh, just a quick question again, uh, for the parcel expansion that you mentioned, uh, will there be a, a bid going out for uh, archeology span firms to uh, do assessments on the area? And if so, um, would again, would it be like a selection of lowest bids? And uh, the question is, uh, would that be, I guess the bids be taken from uh, firms that are outside of uh, Arizona? Yeah, great question about who would be conducting those surveys and how that bid process would work. Um, Let's see, shall we? Um, Chas, do you, or would that be, uh, is there another person that you think would be good to answer that question, please? Yes, I've got Adrian Rankin here. Uh, she's our lead archeologist here in the RMO. Um, she is on the line, she'll answer that question. Regarding the uh, additional parcel, a portion of that has already been surveyed for cultural resources, and the firm that did that is local. We do not try to go with low bid. We always try to go with best value, which is not the lowest bid. Uh, we don't determine in advance who um, submits a proposal to us, but we find it to our advantage and to the advantage of the cultural resource to actually have firms who have a great deal of experience on the range. And we put that in our scopes of work. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. You're okay. welcome. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, Lois, I see you have your hand raised. Uh, do you have another question for us? You could unmute yourself. Uh, you're muted. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, my question, another question I have is about water. Um, are there streams running through there? Um, is there and is there some uh, testing that's going to be done on those as well as the aquifers that may or may not be lying underneath all that? Because I know that a lot of stuff, you know, you have a lot of chemicals and things that go into all of these ordnance and 
what's going to be done about that to keep from polluting the water? Gotcha. And um, I'm going to defer to Chaz um, or if we have Bill Sellers who can speak to that. Uh, Chaz, Chaz can talk to and Bill can chime in for, for the Western side. Uh, on the Air Force side of the range, um, you know, the, the range itself is in, in extreme southwestern Arizona. It is a uh, predominantly, well, it is pure desert. Um, there are no active running streams. Uh, there are uh, some, there are some wells out there. Uh, some are very old. Um, but it, but in large, there is there's no really any water source. Uh, as you get closer to the Gila River, uh, north of the range, closer to Gila Bend and or Yuma, uh, the Gila River did flow through there until they dammed it up. Uh, there is water up there. There's wells up there uh, that people tap into. From a munitions uh, employment standpoint, uh, we do run munitions constituent surveys um, and sample water. We sample ground uh, to see what sort of uh, contaminants may or not, may not be uh, blowing off the range and, and therefore contaminating something. Uh, and to date, uh, we haven't shown any evidence of that occurring. Does that help answer the question? Bill, Bill, do you want to add anything? If, if you'd like any elaborative information on the Marine Corps side or the Western portion, uh, echo everything that Chaz uh, mentioned prior to this. And uh, be it known that of the 70,000 acres utilized for munitions employment, all of the munitions on the Western portion are inert, uh, not producing some of the munitions constituents associated with high explosive bombs. So the problem is a little less uh, is a little less challenging uh, out in the West, but we conduct all the similar surveys that Chaz mentioned. I have no identified waters of the U.S. flowing through that area, and there are there is a very comprehensive operational range clearance program that the Marine Corps participates in which clears the range on a quarterly, semi-annual, and sometimes just annual basis. But at a minimum, once a year, the range is actually cleared of debris to reduce the probability related to some of the concerns that you mentioned. I hope that helps. Thank you. Okay, yes, thank you, Bill. You know, uh, the time has just flown by, but I believe uh, it's time for us to go ahead and wrap up our meeting for today. Um, I'm going to ask Eddie Ariola to come back and um, share all the variety of ways that we would love to uh, accept more comments and questions from you guys and that uh, we will uh, be sure to provide answers to that. Go ahead, Eddie. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Um, just want to confirm that there are no other questions, but if there are, you just you could either type them in. Um, but in, in summary, um, for you to submit comments and continue to be involved in the process, you could always write, uh, send an email at blm underscore az underscore azso underscore bmgr withdrawal at blm.gov. Uh, you could also fax in questions or comments at 602-417-9454, or you can send them in via standard mail at my attention to the BLM State Office at 1 North Central Avenue, Suite 800, Phoenix, Arizona, 85004. We also provide federal relay service for the hearing impaired, and that number is 800-877-8339. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you could also review the application, legal description, the respective maps, and any documentation related to the application at any one of the three office, BLM offices. That's the Arizona State Office, Phoenix District Office, or the Yuma Field Office. Um, also, as a reminder, comments on the legislative EIS, scoping, uh, uh, 
deadline is June 3rd, 2020. And the BLM comment deadline for the land withdrawal is July 20th, 2020. And again, um, we are a cooperating agency in the legislative EIS, so our comments are shared throughout. Um, and thank you very much, Nancy, I think you... Uh... Sure, thank you, Eddie. Um, I wanna thank everyone who joined us today, and I really wanna thank all of our panelists and specialists behind the scenes that have been supporting uh, me and the other speakers and providing uh, a lot of hard work answering questions. Uh, thank you for joining us. The video and transcript will be uploaded to the BLM Arizona YouTube channel. You can link to that from blm.gov forward slash Arizona. And, uh, our social media forums are posted at the bottom of the BLM Arizona webpage. You can also find more information about this project as well as a video and transcript from today's meeting on the BMGR project website. Once again, that's www.barry-m-goldwater-leis.com. And there's lots of other information about this project, including some excellent videos on that website that uh, hopefully will answer many of your questions that we weren't able to get to today. So uh, once again, thank you so much. That concludes our meeting for today. Thanks for joining us.